Hello YouTube! My name is Nero and today we have this week's episode of Dear Nero which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where you guys send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I do my best to go ahead and answer them. Today we got some Titanfall gameplay, the game that everybody has seemed to have forgotten about and uh, the common complaint and it's one I agree with as well is that there just wasn't enough in this game. It was a really innovative concept, it was really really fun for like a month. And then just a lack of customization, a lack of primary weapons, just a lack of seems to come in in a lot of complaints about Titanfall. And that is the reason why I think a lot of people kind of stopped playing this game. But I have a bunch of gameplay of it that's perfect for Dear Nero. You never know how long Dear Nero is going to be. And though I'm shooting for like a 20 minute episode this week, we'll have to see exactly how long this one's going to be, how long it'll take me to answer these questions. But yeah, got some Titanfall gameplay because, uh, to be quite perfectly honest, uh, it's just going to sit on my computer doing nothing. It's gathering virtual dust, and I might as well use it, and I hope you guys all enjoy that. I mean, it's Titanfall. It's fun to watch. I mean, uh, it can kind of get stale playing it, but watching it's kind of cool. I mean, you got the run around, you got the double jumping, and you got the wall running, and the robots fighting each other. It's fun stuff. But I hope you guys all enjoy that. Let's hop into this with the first question he's going to write. Dear Nero, with all these new camos and other items coming to Call of Duty Ghost, do you think Infinity Ward is going overboard on microtransactions? Also, would you like to see the same amount of microtransactions in Advanced Warfare? Tanner from Texas. So Tanner, I would agree that there seems to be a lot more microtransaction DLC within Call of Duty this year. Now, it could be wrong. In my head, it feels like it's right. I didn't look up the numbers on this, but I feel as though Ghost is releasing way more personalization DLC than Black Ops 2 ever did, right? It feels that way. And would I like to see the same amount in Advanced Warfare? Sure, definitely. Personalization DLC is something that is awesome. The best thing about DLC, downloadable content, is the fact that you're not required to get it, all right? The beauty of it, is if you like Call of Duty, you like Call of Duty Ghosts, you like Black Ops, whatever game the DLC is coming out for, right? It could be even a non-Call of Duty. We could be talking about, I don't know, Skyrim, whatever, right? Any game that comes out, DLC is an amazing thing. It's great that they give you DLC because if you want it, there's more content there. If you don't want more content, you don't feel like buying more content, then fine. You don't need to get it. But if you're into the game enough to the point where you want more things... Having more things available to you for a price is not the worst thing in the world. It's actually pretty freaking awesome. Do you like Call of Duty? Do you have all the camos? Well, here, now you can have some more ones. That's a kind of an awesome idea. Are you kind of tired of the maps? Well, here, we've got map packs coming and all kinds of different maps for you to run around on and have fun with. I love the idea of downloadable content. They can throw as much of it at us as they want. It does not bother me in the slightest because it's stuff that you're not required to buy. It does not impact your gaming experience for the most part and it's pretty good they've done a pretty good job of taking stuff like the ripper and adding it to the game a brand new weapon something completely new innovative for the series and having it not be overpowered and trying to avoid that entire pay to win system which plagues so many other games but does not play the call of duty series it's great giving us new guns new maps new weapons it's all fantastic stuff and the game itself is still fun and enjoyable without downloadable content so more stuff more fun more awesome i love the idea of dlc i welcome more of it in ghost and i welcome all the dlc in advanced warfare next question he writes dear nero what are your favorite gaming podcasts and would you ever consider doing a podcast my favorites are the co-optional podcast the player one podcast and the best is the cvg podcast from here in the uk love your channel lee from yorkshire england so lee that's a lot of podcasting right there i've heard of the co-optional podcast i don't i'm not aware of the player one or the evg podcast now i do listen to the co-optional podcast rather often I'll actually listen to it every week. It's a good podcast. It's got Total Biscuit and Jesse Cox and Dodger, and I usually bring on a guest. Uh, Wild Crandor. For some reason, when Wild Crandor is on that is on that podcast, it's hilarious. It's Wild Crandor is funny to me. Um, I listen to basically two podcasts: the Co-optional Podcast and Painkiller Already. Though I would like to take this time to say that Painkiller Already. I have been a fan. I've seen every episode, and they're like a hundred and like eighty episodes into Painkiller Already. It's so good. It's got Wings of Redemption, or it used to have Wings of Redemption. Um, Boys Gamer Tag, FPS Kyle, and Lefty. Right? It's a pretty good podcast. I like listening to it. Though I must say, as of late, 
the Painkiller Array podcast has more or less become the Ask Reddit Q&A podcast, and they just kind of sit there and answer questions. I would like actual topics on that podcast, I guess, is what I'm asking for, but I get that with the co-optional podcast, so you kind of get the best of both worlds with both watching the two of them. Uh, game podcasts are fun. I've, will I ever do one? I've done one. Uh, we had a mini podcast called the SB Hour uh, with myself and a few friends, and we had like four episodes or so, and Mr. Boss for was a guest on, I think, two of them. Um, I don't know, we did the podcast, I just didn't feel as though it was that great, um, not to put down my friends, but they're just not energetic youtuber people, kind of, like me and Mr. Boss for the win, we've been, we've been doing YouTube for a long time, we kind of, we kind of know the ropes, you know, whenever there's a silence, bam, we're trying to fill that silence, we're ready to go, and with the other people we were trying to do it with, um, uh, I don't know, it just felt as though they were too quiet on times, they didn't really have an opinion on a whole lot of things, they just, they just weren't that into it, I didn't feel as though it was that great of a show. Am I open to podcasts in the future? Sure, uh, definitely. Um, if, I were, if I were invited on a certain podcast, would I join it? Probably, I don't know, it depends on the podcast, I guess. But, will I be doing one myself? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Eh, well, let's see, well, let's see. We never know what the future will hold here on Nero Cinema. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I know you're a hunter, and I was wondering what is the largest deer you have ever killed based on antler size. Keep entertaining all of us, Cal from Ohio. So Cal, the biggest buck I ever shot was a six point, and it was a rather big six point. I don't know if I've told this story before, but regardless, I'm going to tell it again. Uh, it was one of my first times ever hunting when I got that six point, and six point may not seem like pretty big, but around here, apparently it's pretty big. You don't see too many big bucks around here anymore, at least the past couple years. There's lots of stories of 12 points and things like that uh, when I was younger, but it seems as of late, nobody's really seen to be getting anything really that big. Um, but it, well, I got my six point, the, the biggest six point I've gotten, because I've gotten a few different six points. The big one, I was really young. We went up in the woods behind my house, and my dad sat me up in his tree stand. It's like a little metal tree stand that just kind of sits there. You basically almost tie it to the tree. I don't really know how you describe it. But I've been mean, sitting there in that tree stand, right? He sits me up in there. It's real early in the morning. Uh, the sun's like barely up. You know, you can barely see. It's kind of dark. And he's like, all right, you sit here. I'm going to move like 100 yards over that way. And then he's got a little spot he likes to sit over there. And that way, you know, he can watch, you know, down the hill. And I can watch what's on top of the hill, right? That's kind of how we're going to do that. And we got the little walkie-talkie so I can say, hey, we got this or that or the other. So he sets me up in there, and he walks over his spot. And within, it feels like 10 minutes, that six-point deer walked right under the tree span. I shit you not, it's like 10 feet away from me. And I didn't even really have to scope in. You know, I just kind of shot it. Got on the walkie, and I like, got one. <laughs> and my dad's like, no shit. And he ends up coming over, and it was pretty cool. And he helped me gut it, because I never gutted a deer before. Um, well, I guess I did. My very first buck was a little button buck. But he did most of the gutting on that, because that was my first time ever out. This is like my second or third time out. And he helped me gut it. And there we go. Had my deer. And it was pretty cool, because it walked like literally 10 feet away from me. When I got it, it had no idea I was there. Because, you know, I'm up in the tree stand, and he couldn't smell me. So that was kind of a little fun story. But yeah, the biggest buck I ever shot was a six point. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what is your favorite gamer tag that you've ever had? Jay from Florida. Well, Jay, a little known fact about me is my gamer tag used to change freaking so often. I've had so many different gamer tags. Most of them were different forms of Nero. You know, Nero 10, Nero 814, uh, Private Nero. Um, I'm trying to think different ones uh there was arctic nero we have a clan called arctic um i think which i think is now actually a, a different clan i don't know i had a bunch of different gamer tags but the funniest gamer tag i ever had was just because i'm stupid and spent money for no reason or maybe i had extra microsoft points or something i changed my gamer tag to my friend's name like i say his name here could be easy to find him because it's the internet and stuff but his full legal real name is why i changed my gamer tag to and it was just funny, the reactions, because we always, you know, played in a party, we always had everyone on, like, all the time back then, and it was, I think it was during Modern Warfare 2, and I ended up just getting online and joining this, the uh, the party chat, and everyone saw what my gamer tag was, and everyone, you know, of course knew it was his name, and it was funny, and it was awesome, and yeah, I've changed names a lot, and I, I guess I could try and make a list, but I'm sure I'd miss out, I, I, I had to have changed my gamer tag probably 30 times. 
over the course of me being on Xbox Live. But I, th I, th I think I honestly single-handedly funded the entire research and development phase of the Xbox One with the amount of times that I've changed my gamer tag. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the funniest one is I changed it to my friend's gamer tag. Um, other times, like my friends would have a gamer tag, then they would change it to something new. Then I would change my gamer tag to what their old gamer tag was. I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? And <laughs> I would just, I spent a lot of money on Microsoft points. I really don't know why. Looking back at it, but yeah, that was probably my favorite one. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I love your videos. I've been a long-time subscriber, and I was watching your perfect Call of Duty video, and I was thinking, what other gaming franchise has as many games in the series, has a strong fan base, and sells good every time a new installment to the series is released? And I thought to myself, Pokemon. So I was wondering, what would go into the perfect Pokemon game? Keep up the great work, Jerry from Florida. So Jerry, I am very biased in this answer. I am what some people may refer to as a Gen 1-er because I started in Generation 1. It was my childhood. I played through the Kanto region countless times and it is just so ingrained in my mind. Like I could, I could walk through that thing like blindfolded, I feel like. I've played so many times. I just love everything about Generation 1. I love the nostalgia trip that I go on every time I play a Generation 1 game. And for me, a perfect Pokemon game would probably be a 3DS remake of like a Pokemon Red or Blue, honestly. Um, they, I know they did uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, but let's face it, that, that was on a Game Boy Advance tech. You know, it bring them back again. Why not? They're remaking uh, Ruby and Sapphire, which they, which they've gone through this entire thing. So they basically, they remade Red and Blue by making Fire Red and Leaf Green, right? And then they went and remade uh, so, uh, Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, all right? And now they're going to be remaking uh, Ruby and Sapphire with, I think it's Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, if I get the names mixed up, whatever. So there, uh, every like other year, every couple years, they seem to remake a Pokemon game. But the thing is, Generation 1, you know, the Pokemon games that started at all, you know, they don't have, like, a 3D version. They don't have a super awesome, mega awesome version. So, I would like for them to remake a Generation 1 game onto the Nintendo 3DS. I would get that, and I would play the hell out of it. Hell, switch it up, right? It's basically the same storyline. You know, Pokemon Red and Blue going into Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, right? Basically the same thing, just slightly, you know, you go, you go from the Game Boy Color graphics to Game Boy Advance graphics. And I think they add the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 islands, right? That's basically the same thing. Change up a bit if you want to. Make it a revisiting kind of thing, you know? Make it so red, kind of like what the, Didn't they do that in Pokemon Silver and Gold, uh, where you go back to the Kanto region and, it, you know, it's a bit tougher. I think Blue is now the gym leader at uh, Viridian City. And Red is up there in some mountain doing God knows what. Make it so Red's the champion. Make it so Blue is the eighth gym leader. Make it so there's a whole new storyline, not just, you know, the same old washed up, you know, Team Rocket's trying to take over the thing and get the Mewtwo and do that and stuff. Maybe add something new. I don't know. Do something different, but still, I would, I would, I would love anything to make a long... I'm definitely making a short answer long, but I would love anything... That would involve Generation 1 and the remaking of Generation 1. I want to go back to Kanto. You know, I want to go to Palatown. I want to go to Saffron City and Celadon City. I want to go to Celadon Mart because it's giant. I want to go to the creepy Lavender Tower. I want all of that. All right, I, I love Generation 1. It's Some people call me a Gen 1-er, I guess, which is pretty accurate. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I was wondering if you can make an updated series on how to grow your YouTube gaming channel. It would be good for many new subs since your old series, which you had 12,000 subscribers, now you have 180,000. You could go more in depth and make a longer series. Thank you for your time and effort. Jet from Tennessee, originally from the Ukraine. So you go from the Ukraine to Tennessee. You know, I've often wondered, and this is completely off topic, I wonder while I'm out driving and such, you know, I look at the car in front of me. Maybe maybe, tra maybe there's a little bit of traffic. Maybe I'm behind somebody at the drive through And you see their license plate. And their license plate will be, like, I don't know, some random state. Tennessee. And I'm like, why are you here? We are a small town of about 5,000 people in northwest Pennsylvania. Why are you from Tennessee here? You know, what could you po where could you possibly be going? Or I mean, why are you here? Or where are you going that you need to come through here that you're from Tennessee and you're just in my little town? I've always wondered that. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys may wonder that same thing if you're from a small town. But um, the question itself is about my uh, how to grow your YouTube channel. I made a video about how to grow your YouTube channel back during Modern Warfare 3 when my channel was like initially starting to grow a little bit. And um, how I, the whole point of the video, which I think there was like kind of two parts to it. The, the point of it 
was to make your YouTube channel, to grow your YouTube channel, is there's a couple ways. But the way I chose and the way I can I continue to do is try and make videos that people want to find. That that's that's the entire key of it. You see so many people and a lot of people like you look um, at YouTubers that are really popular back during Modern Warfare 2, maybe popular during the original Black Ops. I kind of like the old school original people. Maybe you know people going back in the Call of Duty 4. You know, a lot of those people, they're not on top of their game anymore. A few of them, sure, but a lot of them have really started to fall off, and you see that they're just really doing it to themselves here on YouTube. But the videos that they're posting, they're posting videos for people that watched them five years ago. You know, you gotta make videos that bring in new viewers. You gotta make videos that people want to find. You can't just make a video like, hey, check out my awesome 40 and 5 gameplay while I talk about a random topic. Right? That doesn't that doesn't do it. That doesn't, that, that doesn't bring in new people that want to interact with you or you want to interact with them or, or talk about something of interest. That's why I do gaming news. News is stuff that people want to find. And news is stuff that affects me and affects you and it's interesting. So I occasionally, when you know relevant news to me and my channel come out, I talk about it. I talk about news. We do uh, Chem Strike Saturday. Everyone loves to watch Chem Strikes. People want to see Chem Strikes with different guns on different maps using different stuff. And people want to grow their YouTube channels at the same time. And I want to be able to, you know, grow on YouTube myself. So I'm like, all right, we'll do Chem Strike Saturday. All right. And the whole point of Chem Strike Saturday is you guys send in Chem Strikes. I upload to my channel. I talk about it and try to hopefully help people out. And then the people that sent in the Chem Strikes, you know, they get a little bit of exposure. People can go over their channel. They get new subscribers. I get a cool video to go up on my channel. My subscribers get a cool video to watch. You got to do videos that people want to find. You go look at the most popular videos. Go to anybody's channel, anybody's channel, and you go to the videos tab and you change the, the, the filter to most popular. It's all stuff that people want to find. It's not just some random garbage. It's stuff that people want to find. It's stuff that's interesting. And if you're posting stuff that people want to find and that is interesting, then people are going to subscribe and people are going to continue to watch you as long as you keep posting interesting stuff that people want to watch. That's the whole point of it. A lot of people, they just resort to, here, let me just cut up my live stream that I did on Twitch and I'm going to turn this two-hour live stream into 20 videos and just upload them to my YouTube channel. Nobody wants to see that. I mean, sure, you're your own subscribers. You know, some people will want to see that. Of course, there's an audience for that. But people aren't going to, you know, try and find your Black Ops 1 live commentary gameplay that was uploaded this year they're not gonna find that people don't care they don't want to see that stuff your own subscribers maybe but if you want to grow you have to put out the kind of videos that people outside of your subscriber range are gonna want to find search results is how you grow on youtube search results and related videos and why make an updated guide well i just did the exact same thing i said when i had 12,000 subscribers i'll say until i have however many subscribers i end up with Right? That's how you grow on YouTube. That's how I chose to grow on YouTube. Of course, there's different ways, but that's the way I feel as though most people have the most success. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, if Treyarch were to release a World of War II, where would you like them to base it, and would you like them to stay with Miller and Dimitri? P.S. At the time of this Dear Nero video going up, my birthday will be tomorrow, the 22nd of May. Could you please say happy birthday and thanks for making me think of questions instead of doing lessons at school. Stay awesome and have a wonderful day. Sam from England. So happy birthday to you, Sam. Or happy almost birthday. Depends on when you're watching this. You could be watching this on Day It Goes Up, which is 21st, or you could be watching it in the future, in which case it will be your birthday or past your birthday. Um, World of War. World of War II. Um, would I like it to be... Where would I like it to be or would I like them to you know, continue with uh, Miller and Dimitri, which Dimitri was the Russian part of the campaign and Miller was the American part of the campaign. Um, sure, you can have... You can go with Miller or Dimitri, although we learned Dimitri's ultimate fate in Black Ops. I would like to... There's different parts of World War II that they could explore. I would I would like a World War II game. Uh, World War II would be fine. I'll take anything World War II related, to be honest. But I would like it to be maybe something different. Maybe some of the stuff that World of War didn't cover themselves, like Normandy, D-Day. Let's have D-Day in there. Let's involve that. Let's involve a little bit more of Stalingrad. We didn't see a whole lot of that in World of War. Uh, different things like that I think would be pretty interesting to have in uh, World of War II. Maybe some different things. But like I said, man, I would go for anything. I would just love another World War II Call of Duty game. It would just be great. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I was wondering, why aren't you playing sports games on your channel? Zyme React from Texas. So, so Mr. Zyme, why don't I play sports games on my channel? Mainly because I don't play a lot of sports games, to be honest. Uh, I play sports games. This is my thing every single year with sports games. I start out with a sports game, particularly Madden. 
all right? And I play the holy hell out of it, and I love it, and I love every second of it, and I think I've done Madden videos for the past two Maddens here on my channel, basically reviews, and one time I did this, I recorded this because it was in the Super Bowl, and it was just horrible. I was trying to record a fourth quarter comeback, and at the time, Colt McCoy was the Browns quarterback, and I was in the Super Bowl on Madden, playing on all Madden mode, the hardest difficulty, and I'm down, and I overthrew my receiver twice in a row, which would have won the game and lost the Super Bowl because of it, and it's one of my, it's one of my popular videos here on my channel, it's got like 150,000 views or something, it's funny, um, I don't know man, I think I hear thunder in the background, I wonder if my mic will pick that up, he had storm in here in Pennsylvania really loudly, but the reason I don't play sports games here on my channel is sports games... I never really know how to make videos on sports games, to be honest. I see other people, they'll do a My Player mode, and they'll do a whole thing with that. And maybe I could do that with something in the future, but the thing about it is, man, like, to do, like, a baseball game, right? There's no good baseball games for a 360. There is none. Oh, the MLB 2K series, I think, is discontinued. They brought this in this RBI baseball, which is just awful. Uh, MLB The Show is freaking awesome. I've seen videos of it. It looks amazing. Everything sounds awesome about MLB The Show, but it's for PlayStation only. Now I own a PlayStation, and I'm not about to drop $400 to be able to play a baseball game. So I'm kind of screwed in a baseball game. Basketball games, right? 82 games in a season. That's 82 videos. They're all game. Ugh, that just sounds ridiculous. Yeah, that's, I, I couldn't even be bothered to finish my first season, which you guys tell me it, once you get to your second season, you can only play, you can skip games to do whatever. But I can't even get through the first season on NBA uh, 2K14 in my player mode. 82 games plus playoffs for the series are seven games apiece? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Too many games. The game I would want to do it on would be Madden. I like football, 16 game seasons, single elimination playoffs, sounds all fine and dandy. Madden, my player, has been awful lately. It's been, oh, I've talked about this a couple times, but Madden, every single year with the Madden franchise, you get updated rosters, slightly better graphics, and less features. That's basically how Madden goes. So, they're just, sports games are kind of bad as of late, and that's really why you don't see a whole lot of them on my channel. That, and I burn myself on Madden when it first comes out. I play through the franchise ridiculously, like religiously, like every day it's all I'm playing. And then I burn myself out on it and just don't play until the next year. <laughs> That's kind of how Madden goes for me. I play for a month and then don't touch it and I pick it up again next year. It's kind of how Madden goes for me. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, have you ever played any Assassin's Creed games? And if so, which one was your favorite? Marius from Norway. And I hope I pronounced your name right. Marius. I hope I did that right. Might have been right, might have been wrong. M-A-R-I-U-S, Marius. I hope I did that. I don't know if I did that right. I haven't played any Assassin's Creed games. I played Assassin's Creed, I believe it was 3. It was the one where it's kind of like Revolutionary War-esque. And uh, I don't know, man. I couldn't get into the campaign. I just couldn't. But I will say this. I played multiplayer a lot. There was like this free-for-all game mode that my, me and my friend would go play. And it is the one where everyone's walking around. And there's tons of NPC players everywhere. But you're walking around. And your orders are kind of like assassinate one of the other players. And one of the other players has an order to assassinate you. And so you're kind of walking around and you don't know who's going for who, who's going for who. And you can just take each other out. Like I would wait in the bushes or jump out of a hay bale. Or It was just a fun kind of a free-for-all game mode that I would play uh, with my friend Mike all the time. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. The campaign itself I just couldn't get into. I've never... Yeah, I didn't play any other Assassin's Creed games. This doesn't sound interesting to me. And from what I hear, it's not the greatest franchise anymore. That they don't really you know, change it up enough. Which, that kind of complaint comes to a lot of games. So I don't really know how valid of an excuse that is. But, I don't know. I've just never really been interested in it. And, I don't know. Just, meh. don't really feel like learning and playing. And, yeah. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, would you rather land at Normandy during D-Day or fight in Stalingrad during the battle there in World War II? Ken from Massachusetts. Well, Ken, I would like to go. Sign me up, man. I'm going to Stalingrad because Normandy was a slaughter. Are you guys aware of Normandy? Are you guys aware of D-Day, the, the, the invasion of Normandy, D-Day? Have you? You guys, are you guys aware of that? Have you seen the opening scene to Saving Private Ryan? That's about what it was. It's American troops all in ships landing on a beach and just walking into chain gun fire. For the most part, it was pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. Put me in Stalingrad. At least I have a chance there. And the Russians won, so the good guys won there. So I, I might live. So I'll go to Stalingrad, rather. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, you keep mentioning that games like Black Ops, World at War, and COD 4 reward the better player. So are you saying that the game should punish bad players? Because I hate getting spawn trapped. Agent 9400 from Georgia. So Mr. Agent, uh, apparently you're 
bad player. That's, I don't know what you said in the video. The thing about this is, I don't, I don't think you should punish a bad player necessarily, but the worst thing an FPS game can do, especially Call of Duty, is punish a good player. And that, that's just complete ass backwards, right? So basically how it was, like back in the older Call of Duties especially, and you see it if you watch my Call of Duty 4 videos, that the spawns don't flip a whole lot in those games. If you have domination, you have the B and the C flag, well guess what? The enemy team spawned on the A flag, and that's how it's going to be for quite a while. You know, it takes a lot to flip them spawns. You're not going to shoot them like literally as they're popping up, but you're going to, they're going to be trapped within that general area for quite a while. And I liked it that way. I liked it that way because if you were the better team or you were the better player, because I play Call of Duty 4 solo mainly now, and uh, I, I can go in there and single handedly keep an entire team quarantined in an area, you know, and it helps our team win. It just, it's just a win overall because, you know, I'm a good player. And a lot of people who play Call of Duty 4 are not good players. I don't know why they're even playing the game. It's weird because, like, you look at their accounts, this is obviously their main account. They have like 30,000 gamer score, but they're playing a game that came out seven years ago in multiplayer. And, you know, they're like level five. It's it's weird. But uh, I liked it better that way because you're if you're a good player and you're on the better team, you're going to kind of dominate the enemy team. And the enemy team has to push you back, right? The enemy team has to get out of the spawn trap. The enemy team has to push back, take the flags, rally themselves, use teamwork, use some gun skill, become better players. They actually improve this way. Whereas in the newer Call of Duty's, you know, uh, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, uh, Call of Duty Ghost, um... I'm trying to think, did Black Ops do this? I don't remember. I can't remember Black Ops for some reason if they if the spawns flipped a lot. I don't, in my head, I don't think they did, but they might have. Um, in the newer games, for the most part, if you're playing Domination, for example, and you have A and B, and you go up there to the C flag, and you get a little bit too close, all of a sudden the enemy team is spawning behind you and shooting you in the back. You know, that, that's something that happens in Call of Duty now, and that's basically them just holding the hands of all the new players. Like, here, what's that? The enemy team's a little bit better than you. Let's just make it so you can shoot them in the back real quick. Let's just put spawns here and here and here. I picture them, like, making Call of Duty kind of like in Forge World, where I like, a spawn point here, and a spawn point here, and here, and here, 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 and there's always other fucking spawn points just everywhere, to the point where you have no idea where anyone's spawning any of the time. You're just kind of getting shot from all directions. It's complete chaos. You have no idea what's happening. I prefer the structure... That Call of Duty 4, World of War, Modern Warfare 2, maybe Black Ops. Like I said, I, I'm fuzzy at Black Ops for some reason. I liked it when it was more structured that way, where wherever flag you had, that was where you were spawning. And if you wanted to get another flag, guess what? You're going to have to man up, grab your sack, assuming you have one. Maybe you're a girl. I think I have like 5% girls watching me. And go out there, capture some flags, kill some people, and become a better player and earn the flags back. Not just have them given to you. Right, that's why I like it. So, punish bad players if you want to call it that. Punish the bad players if they're not good enough to, you know, break their way out. And I guess, I guess you have to get better instead of the game holding your hand. Because let's be honest, that doesn't make you better. Next question, he writes, dear Nero. So my dad hates the amount of time I spend watching YouTube at night. I don't like a lot of the TV shows that my parents watch, so I hop on YouTube and I watch Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto 5 videos. My dad questions why I watch other people play games. I tried to explain to him that it's just like watching TV, but he still doesn't understand why I watch Call of Duty and GTA 5 videos. I was wondering if you could help me in my situation. Keep up the great work and have a wonderful day. Brady from Iowa. So Brady, your dad sounds... As much as I just sounded like an old school FPS Call of Duty nerd right there, my last question that I answered, uh, your dad kind of sounds like the old school kind of dad, like, video games. Why are you watching people play video games? It's the stupidest thing I ever heard. But yet your dad's watching television while that happens. I, I hate when old people, <laughs> and I'm old too. I'm an old man now. I'm 22 years old. I'm, just, I'm, I'm an old man. I'm thinking about retirement now. I'm, I'm old. I'm old. I, my back's starting to hurt. I'm yelling at kids to get off my lawn. I'm old. I, 22 is an old guys ridiculous i can't believe i'm 22 um but your dad feels like to me he seems like this kind of old guy doesn't really understand it and it's weird because you watching call of duty videos and watching grand theft auto 5 videos and whatever kind of videos you want to watch anything anything on your cinema especially anything you want to watch is the same as your dad watching a show on cars your dad watching a hunting program your dad watching a home improvement program or your mom watching cooking shows or interior decorating or whatever you know, they have interests, and they watch shows that are relevant to that interest. You like video games, you're going to watch video game stuff. 
right? Because there's not exactly a whole bunch of video game related stuff on television. So where do you go? You go on YouTube. You go watch other people do it. You know, talk about it and interact and become part of this whole thing community thing we have going on here. And that's what you do. It's the exact same as you watching television. My mom has... Uh, I don't know if it'd be an interest. My mom likes to watch uh, CSI shows. She really likes uh, those cop dramas, CSI crime shows, right? She likes that kind of stuff. She watches it. There you go. She's also really into, for whatever reason, uh, the cooking channel, like the Food Network. She likes to watch that a lot, too. She's interested in cooking. Well, I'm interested in Call of Duty, so guess what? I watch Call of Duty videos, but they're not on TV. So I watch them on the internet. Like, I don't see why your dad is so... So, so indifferent on it. Why is he Why is he like that? I, I don't get it. Uh, I haven't experienced too many people like that, although there is some. And it's mainly old folk that don't understand the inner workings of that magic you got over there, which is called a computer and the internet and all the evil within it. But, uh, yeah, man, I don't see why. I don't see why people would, you know, just people have interests and they want to watch stuff based around their interests. That's how television was born, and that's kind of how YouTube's born. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, would you rather have the SATCOM and the Blackbird or have a UAB but no Blackbird? Thanks for keeping up the great work. Max from North Carolina. Oh man, Max. Oh. I almost made a straw poll about this one. Oh, man. It was like, I didn't know how to answer this question. Like, you literally mind. Oh, you mind fucked me, man. I, I, you mind fucked me with this one. I have no idea what. My answer to this question. I'm still rather confused as to how I would like to answer this question. So picture this. Next Call of Duty game, right? Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Well, you should rather have it. So there's SATCOMs, which we've all agreed that SATCOMs are the bane of our existence. And they just need to bring the UAV back as SATCOMs are ass. Would you rather have SATCOMs and no UAV, but there is a Blackbird kill streak, Or would you rather have it so there's a UAV, but no Blackbird? And it's tricky because the UAV is nice. But it's countered. Every single game has a counter to the UAV. Back in Call of Duty 4, it's called UAV Jammer. Uh, World of War, it's called Camouflage. It's called Cold Blood in Modern Warfare 2. It's called Ghost in Black Ops. It, it, there's one in every single game that counters the UAV. So if there is a UAV, but there's still that perk, a lot of people are going to run that perk, and the UAV is still not going to help out a whole lot. But if you have the SATCOM version, you might as well have no UAV because SATCOMs are worthless. But you do, but you do have the Blackbird. And so I'm going to choose, as hard as it was to pick between this, I'm going to choose the version of a Call of Duty game that would have a SATCOM and the Blackbird in it. Because while the SATCOMs are worthless, I still find myself in Call of Duty Ghosts. I can still consistently go on 10 kill streaks or higher and things of that nature. So if there was a Blackbird in Call of Duty Ghosts, I feel as though I could get it pretty consistently. And since I always play with subscribers or I play with, you know, a party of my friends, you know, one of those gets a Blackbird and it just kind of has a chain reaction from there where, you know, first person gets a Blackbird and then that leads to someone else getting a Blackbird and then someone else gets their Blackbird because of that and then we basically have Blackbird this whole game. I remember they first came out with that kill streak, man, back in Black Ops. I'd run with a full party of nine in Ground War. And from like the one minute mark into the game, we'd have a blackbird to the end of the game. It was just so much fun pooping on people all day and night. It was great. Fantastic stuff. Next and final question he's going to write, Dear Nero, what is your favorite TV show as a child? Personally, the Looney Tunes was one of my favorites. Keep up the great work. Ricardo from Florida. So Ricardo, Looney Tunes. Fun fact, you know, Looney Tunes were out long before probably you and I were born. I don't know how old you are, of course, from the question, but way before I was born, I think the Looney Tunes were running around. I think the Looney Tunes were running around actually when my mom was a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's old stuff. My favorite stuff when I was young, man, and television and Pokemon were my childhood, man. Uh, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon all the way. The shows I grew up on were Rocco's Modern Life, The Rugrats, uh, The Angry Beavers, Cat Dog, uh, Rocket Power was really good, Hey Arnold, um, Nick at Night, and then there was Keen and Kel. Keen and Kel was freaking glorious. I love that show in the movie. Uh, Two Heads Are Better Than None. That was funny too. Um, Nick at Night. I'm trying to think what they what else they had on it. Nick at Night. They had all that. That was a thing. That was also very funny. Um, I remember on Saturday night they had Snick, S-N-I-C-K, Snick, but, uh, it's basically Saturday Night Nick. It was, it was, it was great, man. I loved it. I loved, Nickelodeon was like my whole childhood. I remember sitting there on my, watching my grandparents' console RCA television 
and watching that whenever my cousins came to my grandparents' house, because my grandparents lived very across the yard, and then when they weren't there, I'm back, of course, back at my house watching TV there all the time. But you, my, my childhood, like, sometimes people ask, like, what was the happiest you ever were in your life? And I say, like, I think for a lot of people, of course, not everybody, and it's sad that it's not everybody, but for most people, I think a lot of people really enjoy their childhood. And my childhood, like, one of my favorite memories of it was growing up, you know, going to my grandparents' house, over to my grandparents' house when my cousins would come down, and, you know, having sleepovers over there, making forts in their living room out of, you know, blankets and the furniture and stuff, and, you know, using your imagination and watching Nickelodeon all the time, and it was, that was my childhood, man. I loved Nickelodeon back then, and... Yeah, those are some of my favorite shows. So what 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 I list? Uh, Rocco's Modern Life, Angry Beavers, uh, Hey Arnold, Cat Dog, Rugrats. Oh God, there are so many shows. On. Rocket Powered. I say that I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna forget some, but yeah, basically anything on Nickelodeon. Doug, Doug was funny back then. Oh God, everything about all that was awesome. That was my childhood, man. Those were some of my favorite shows. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the beat deserves. And I expected this dear near to be about 20 minutes long. It turns out it's going to be probably double that. But I guess that's okay. And I can feel my voice going. I usually do this kind of like in one take where I kind of like take a break between questions. And like 40 minutes of straight speaking can definitely harm the voice. Which I think it's starting to do. Kind of sucks, but either way, still hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Tier Nero. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And if you guys like sending your guys' questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the title of the message Dear Nero. And if it's a good question, an entertaining question, above all, a question I have not yet answered before, I will do my best to go ahead and answer it. So hope you guys did enjoy. Remember to rate the video. And hope you guys all have a wonderful day.